friends today today is uh, as we celebrate palm sunday i remember for me palm sunday obviously had to do with a lot of beautiful memories that was connected to obviously the palm but also connected basically to my father every time i think about palm sunday i cannot but think about my father and that's more to do with with the fact that on palm sunday we would be we would be given the palms and unlike unlike the palms here in australia the palms that we were given were far more far more bigger and uh, honestly it looked far more beautiful but it would have this little tip that would would bend over and uh, in the church as we went around i loved seeing the the palms tip just flipping from from side to side but the reason why i remembered my my father is because we would take the palms back home or sometimes even in between the the mass itself i would give the palm into the hand of my father and my dad would would then make a beautiful cross out of it and so we were three kids my brother my sister myself and we would make three crosses he would make three crosses and he would hand it over to us and i always saw how perfectly he made those crosses and that is why i kind of kind of always remember my dad and that happened from the time when i was small and maybe from the age of 5 and 6 and then it happened in age 7 and it happened in age 8 and 9 and 10 and and 13 and 14 and the reality is even today i don't know how to turn this palm leaf into a cross i never studied it from him if i was at home today i'm sure i would have taken the palm leaf gone and given it to him and told him to make it into a cross because i still didn't know how to turn the palm leaf into a cross today is palm sunday and palm sunday is all about the fulfillment of the prophecies that is what jesus is doing through palm sunday it's a fulfillment of all the prophecies because it didn't kind of end with with palm sunday palm sunday was only was only a beginning of the big moment it started with palm sunday jesus is triumphant entry into jerusalem but he didn't get stuck at that moment of glory where all the people were putting out their palms and some of them taking off their cloaks and putting it on the ground he didn't get stuck over there because this was this was now just a beginning of the completion of the prophecy the scripture tells us very clearly what the what the people of israel always did when they had a new king they would go up somewhere away from the palace and then they would choose their king and when they chose their king they would they would have this beautiful celebration of the palms and and of their cloaks we would read in second kings chapter 9 verse 13 when they are proclaiming jehu as king the word says then hurriedly they all took their cloaks and spread them for him to bear steps and they blew the trumpets and pro- proclaimed jehu the king they do that even in the book of maccabees we read about them doing the same where they actually actually cry out with all the palms and crying out singing the glory of god in say in first maccabees 1351 as it would say on the 23rd day of the second month in the 171st year the jews entered it with praise and palm branches and with and with harps and cymbals and all the instruments and hymns and songs that was their way of celebration 
and they celebrated celebrated victory they celebrated the exaltation of kings using the palms and using their cloaks and so here now the king is entering we sang the hymn as we started the king of glory is coming come let us rejoice that is what jesus is doing through that moment of his triumphant entry into jerusalem but mind you it doesn't end at the palms that palm has a meaning that palms are now jesus's moment of that triumphant entry the palm is moving towards the cross the wood of the cross and that is because there is a purpose for jesus's triumphant entry not to ascend on any glorious human throne but to ascend onto the throne of the cross to fulfill the prophecy that is given in the book of zechariah there are beautiful prophecies in the book of zechariah that's actually completing what what jesus is doing is actually completing zechariah's prophecy and we read about this in zechariah chapter 14 verses 3 onwards then the lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle on that day his feet shall stand on the mount of olives and that is where jesus is now coming from he's coming from the mount of olives on that day his feet shall stand on the mount of olives which lies before jerusalem on the east and the mount of olives will be split in two from east to west and it would go on in verse 8 of zechariah 14 on that day living waters shall flow out from jerusalem half of them to the eastern sea and half of them to the western sea they shall continue in summer as in winter and the lord will become king over all the earth on that day the lord will be one and his name one so he will come from the mount of olives as jesus came from the mount of olives and he will stand on that land and there he will split in two from east and west the mount of olives he will split into two jesus enters his triumphant entry into jerusalem and there he will take the throne of the crucifix and as the scripture tells us as matthew himself would tell us that the curtain in the temple was torn into two it was split into two and he's completing a prophecy and as that that as the the curtain in the temple is split into two as the scripture says here in zechariah 14:8 on that day living waters shall flow out from jerusalem the living waters of the spirit the living waters of god shall flow out from jerusalem towards the eastern sea and the western sea and all over it shall spread so this moment of the palm isn't ending in just that triumphant moment of that palm sunday it is moving towards the cross there is a purpose with what jesus is doing what he's doing and that is why that living waters is spoken about in the book of prophet ezekiel in the book of prophet ezekiel chapter 47 it speaks of the waters the living waters that flow from the temple first it comes it is ankle deep verse 4 he measured 1000 and led me through the water now it was knee deep then it became waist deep then i measured it it covered my chest and then it engulfed me and what did that living waters do as i came back i saw on the bank of the river a great many trees on the one side and on the other he said to me this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the araba and when it enters the sea the sea of stagnant waters the water then became fresh when the living waters entered it became fresh we read of a beautiful prophecy in in zechariah chapter chapter 9 zechariah chapter 9 verses 9 onwards 
Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughters of Jerusalem. Lo, your king is coming, triumphant and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And then it goes on in verse 11. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set the prisoners free from the waterless pit. Because of the blood, I will set the prisoners free from the waterless pit. Now the living waters that is flowing, it is leading the stagnant waters into life. And that is exactly what Palm Sunday is supposed to signify for us. That Jesus did not end it with just the palms that were, that were, that were singing his glory. Rather, Jesus moved from the palm to the cross. And that is how it should be for us as well. Not getting stuck in the palms. And we should learn that or else you and I will be like me. All my life knowing to hold palms without knowing to make it into a cross. And we are called to have purpose even as we celebrate this moment of Palm Sunday. From the triumphs that the Lord gives us to the crosses that we will have to carry. And that is important and essential for us from the, the palms to the cross, from our triumphs to the cross, something that has meaning, not just leaving it as a palm, but rather turning it into a cross, something that has meaning. And every triumph that we will go through, that God will gift us in our life, it is not meant for us to just remain in that triumph. It is not for us to just exalt ourselves in that triumph. Rather, that triumph is supposed to lead us to something meaningful. It could be a triumph of your own jobs. It could be a triumph of your own wonderful families and blessed families. But it should have meaning. It shouldn't get stuck in the exaltation of your triumphs that God has blessed you with. It is supposed to take us from the triumph to something that is meaningful, that is fruitful. And that is what Jesus is asking us during this, this Palm Sunday as well. As we hold our palms, let it have meaning. That it is meant to make us, make something of us and something in what we do with these triumphs of our lives. Not just holding on to the triumphs and making it something that doesn't have meaning at all. Our triumphs need to have meaning. Just as Jesus' triumphant entry went on to have a beautiful meaning for the salvation of humankind. We will celebrate during these days as we will celebrate Holy Thursday, the Eucharist. We will celebrate Good Friday, the Passion of the Cross. And we will celebrate the Resurrection Everything had meaning. Palm Sunday would have no meaning if it had ended with that triumphant entry. It had meaning because Jesus made a decision to give it meaning. We are called to give our triumphs a meaning as well. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Bring ourselves into the presence of Jesus. It is a day and time for us to give meaning to our triumphs, our successes, our strengths, our blessings. That just like the living waters that flowed from the temple, when that curtain in the temple was split into two, and it changed the stagnant waters into one that had life. Lord, let the triumphs of our lives, the joys and blessings of our life, have meaning that wherever we go and whatever we do with those triumphs, it will change stagnant waters into fresh and thriving ones. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.